Let's take a look at one more example of graphing a parabola, and then we'll look at a couple of application problems. So here's the function h of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. I want to first find the vertex, and then I want to graph my parabola. So if you remember, the formula for finding a vertex is negative b over 2a. So we can identify our a, b, and c from the quadratic. a is 1, it's the number before the x squared. b is negative 2. c is negative 3. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Now, I picked this one because b is already negative. So if b is negative 2, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Right? 2 times 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So just be careful of those coefficients of the x's. If that b is already negative, the formula is asking us to take the opposite of that negative, which gives us a positive. And then the y value is take that one value and put it back in for x. So h of 1 is 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. So the vertex is 1, negative 4. And when I go to graph it and pick those x values, I'm mostly interested in the x-coordinate, so I know where to start. I want to put the x-coordinate in the middle, and then I'll pick a couple of points on one side, a couple of points on the other side, so that I can get a good idea of which way this thing turns. All right, if I put a negative 1 into the function, don't forget when you square a negative 1, you get a positive 1. So h of 1, or h of negative 1, is going to be negative 1 squared, which is 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2. Minus 3, I actually get 0. If I put in a 0, I can see I'm going to get negative 3. If I put in a 1, we said we we're going to get negative 4. Now they should come in pairs. So this one should match with that one. So if I put a negative 3 for 0, negative 3 goes here also, and a 0. And of course, this only works if you put the vertex in the middle and pick points on either side. So where are my points? Negative 1, 0 is right there on the axis. 0, negative 3 is down here. 1, negative 4. 2, negative 3. And 3, 0. Best I can, I draw a curve that connects them all. So there's my parabola. If I want the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry has to go through the vertex. So since the vertex is at 1, negative 4, my axis of symmetry is here at x equals 1. Draw a vertical line down. There's my axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry goes right through the vertex, which means that that vertex then is a minimum because it's at the bottom of the graph. All right, let's try a couple of application problems. So here's a baseball problem. Baseball is hit into the air. Its height in feet after a certain number of seconds can be given by this function. If you've taken a physics course, maybe that negative 16 t squared looks familiar because that has to do with the gravity constant, right? Gravity constant in feet is 32, so half of that is 16. Question says, what is the height of the baseball when it's hit? So if this baseball is going to get hit and go up in the air and come back down again, baseballs aren't hit from the ground, right? Soccer balls are kicked from the ground, but baseballs are not hit from the ground. They're hit from some height. They go up, then they come back down again, boom, hits the ground. Question is, what is this height? Well, if this axis is time and that axis is height, when the baseball is hit, the amount of time that's elapsed is zero because that's the moment when the baseball hits the bat. So all I need to do is put a zero in for t, and I'll have my answer to part a. So h of zero is zero plus zero plus two. The baseball was hit two feet in the air. Now, the second question says determine the maximum height of the baseball, and when does it happen? Now, if you look at the little graph that I drew up at the top here, the maximum height of the baseball is right there. In other words, it's the vertex of a parabola that opens downward. If you look at my height equation over here, look, that number before the t squared is negative. So this thing opens downward. Vertex is the maximum. So I can simply do a negative b over 2a. Now what am I finding? I'm not finding x. I'm finding t. Right, so let's try that. The b value is 64. Right, so there's my a. Here's my b. The b value is 64, so the opposite of that is negative 64 over 2 times negative 16. All right, so I get negative 64 over negative 32, and that works out nicely. 
t is 2. Now if I want to find the actual height that it hit, I need to find the height at time 2. So we've already figured out that this value down here is 2. What is the height at time 2? It's going to be negative 16 times 2 squared plus 64 times 2 plus 2. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 16 is negative 64. So I get negative 64 plus 128 plus 2 is 66. So I can not only fill in that 2 list at the bottom, now with this information, I can fill in the maximum height of the ball with 66 feet. So start connecting like maximum heights of balls and things like that with the vertex of a parabola that opens downward. All right, one more. This person, Kat L. Brander, oh, a cattle brander, needs to build a rectangular corral for her livestock. The side of the barn can be used as one side of the corral. Okay, so this is a barn. How do I know? Barns are red. Also, I've written barn. That's how I know it's a barn. So she needs to fence in the other three sides. She has 300 feet of fence. What dimensions should she use to make the corral as large as possible? Now, the idea here is she has a fixed amount of fencing, but she can use that fixed amount of fencing in different ways. She can pull it down here and across and up, right? That'll make a fence. But with the 300 feet of fence, she can make a, a really long but narrow one, right? And the fourth side is the barn. So that may take up 300 feet of fencing, but it's not going to give much space. Or she can draw it really long this way and use up 300 feet of fencing, but that's not going to be a very big cattle area either. She wants something that uses 300 feet of fence and makes it as large as possible. So I need some dimensions for my barn or for my corral. If it's a rectangle, I know those two sides are the same and I can call this third one something else. The 300 feet of fence is our perimeter. So the perimeter is the sum of the side lengths. So it's X plus Y plus X. So we know the perimeter is gonna add up to 300 because no matter which ratio of side lengths she uses, is always gonna add up to 300 because that's all the fence she has. X plus X is 2X. Let's subtract the 2X from both sides. And what we end up with is 300 minus 2x equals y. So we can actually get rid of this y and replace it with a 300 minus 2x. You notice now if I add x plus x plus 300 minus 2x, I'm back to 300, which is the amount of fence that she has. The other question that one might ask here is how do I find the area of a rectangle? Area of a rectangle is length times width. So if one side is x, and the other side is 300 minus 2x, I can write a formula for the area of my rectangle in that way. So the area equals, distribute that x, I get 300x minus 2x squared, right? Both terms get that x distributed. If you want to write this in a more standard form, the area is negative 2x squared plus 300x. I've got no c value, which is okay because if I'm going to find the maximum by negative b over 2a, then I'm not going to need a c value. I just need an a and a b. So it looks like here the a value is negative 2. The b value is 300. So if x is negative b over 2a, x is negative 300 over 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. And this actually gives me 75. All right, let's come back to the barn. If the x value is 75, right, if this value over here is 75, then the value down here is 300 minus 2 times 75. So 2 times 75 is 150. 300 minus 150 is 150. So her dimension should be 75 by 150. 75 feet by 150 feet. Now one tick mark means feet. 
and we could specify that the 150 feet is the side that's along the barn, the other two sides that are perpendicular to the barn, each 75 feet. That will allow her to make that corral as large as possible because this graph is actually an upside down parabola. Might be interesting to graph this just to show you what it looks like. Not that I expect you to graph this negative 2x squared plus 300 to find the answer, but I figured it might be a nice thing to graph it and show you how this works. All right, so I pull up Desmos and I'm going to graph y equals negative 2x squared plus 300x. Now, of course, on the scale that I have, you don't see much of anything, so we got to zoom way out to see the top of this thing. How far do we have to go to see the top of it? A long way. All right. So maybe let's set ourselves a scale that works a little bit better for the x's. All right, so I played around with my scale a little bit, and now I have a graph that comes here at zero, goes up to the top, and back down again. You notice where the high point is? This is 60, that's 80, so halfway in between is 70, which makes this one here 75, and look, there it is at the top. That's my vertex. So this really does work, right? The graph starts very low. If I squish those two sides together, I'm going to have zero area at all. As I start pulling them apart, the area increases, increases, increases till I get something that's 75 by 150, which has an area of 11,250. That really is what the Y coordinate tells us. And then as we start turning it the other way, then it starts pushing long ways from the barn and those areas continue to decrease until they get back down to zero. Now, of course, the graph that I graph doesn't know we're talking about the area of a barn or area of a corral. And so it gives us negative values as well we would establish a domain that only goes from zero to 150 so that our graph didn't give negative values. But I thought it would be helpful to see what a graph of that function actually looks like, and that's what it is. And that's the end of this section.